Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of SEOs Getting Coffee. And today it's a very special episode because we have our very first guest on SEOs Getting Coffee joining us for some coffee. Um, we have the wonderful Danny Leitner, and she is here to talk to us today about topical authority. Um, so, yeah, welcome and hello, Amina. How are you both doing? Hi, it's so nice to have you, Danny. I want to hear how you're doing. Our first guest, no pressure. Thank you. I'm <laughs> doing really well. Thank you for having me and being the first guest. That's really an important position here. <laughs> yeah, hopefully yeah. we won't have any uh, any sound effects now because uh, for a while there, Sean was doing these like pitching and stuff sound effects. So I'm glad that yeah. he didn't. <laughs> Yeah, it's just you know, boys, boys when they boys with their new toys, and then it's just <laughs> overboard. So I have got that out of my system now. So yeah, um, good. But yeah, I've got my coffee today. I've actually got a good mug, oh, Amina. Yeah. Um, this is Zara the dog, um, who you can find on our website um, somewhere. Um, yeah. And this was made. This was made as a present for me for from Maggie actually. So uh, my, my wife Maggie, who also uh, runs Vixen Digital. Um, she's the founder really, but, um, anyway, she's in charge. She, <laughs> she is the boss. Um, so yeah, great to, uh, great to be sharing a coffee. Um, let's talk about topical authority. Um, let's get right into it. Um, Amina, did you have any kind of starting points that you wanted to start with or shall I just jump in and, and kind of go for one you of my jump questions? Jump in and I'll, um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll jump in after you and uh, we'll be nice to Danny. Don't worry, Danny. Oh, that's Fantastic. Nice. Good to hear. Um, so I guess the, the main the main thing I think that would be helpful for everybody really is if we just define, you know, topical authority really and give a, give a, a basis of, you know, what is topical authority? Um, Danny, in as, as kind of basic and simple form, how would you kind of summarize and, and, and define topical authority? That's a really good question. I haven't talked about a simple explanation so far. Topical authority for me is when your website is the, the site you should go to for a special topic if you want more information and want have questions. So it would be not just a topic you write one or two blog posts about or you have like three things on your website. No, it would be the topic that you actually go into depth, that you have a lot of content, that if a user lands on your website, it's not just, oh, I'm going back to Google to do some further research. No, he just stays at your website because there's everything he needs. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a, uh, yeah, I like, I like the kind of the glossary term I like to use sometimes as well, because, you know, I think it's, it's really good when you have like, you know, obviously internal linking and you, you know, you're going to some, go into like a, a subject, say, I don't know, you're looking for I don't know, some, something new for your house, right? Or whatever it might be. And you're looking to do some, you know, painting your fence or something. And as it's, as it's getting nearer to spring, we can actually start thinking about that now. But you go to a website and then, you know, obviously you've got, you can go to, you know, come into that website for, you know, advice for best paints to use or whatever it might be. But then you have a lot of other resources that kind of lead you on a journey. So you don't actually have to leave that website. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I'm not so happy with the word glossary because I yeah. think it's used yeah. really bad. Oh, yeah. Because... It's like one of those strategies that, that kind of yeah. is not. I think it's that for me, what you were saying, it's really interesting because it's like that. For... I always say that it's like a corpus of content that you have on your <sighs> website on a particular topic that makes you the expert in that topic. So yeah. it's kind of the expertise that come out. That's yeah, a really yeah, good yeah. description as well. Yeah, that's it. I mean, perhaps, you know, perhaps a glossary is, is one of those. Yeah, it's one of those one of those words that some people don't don't like to know, but perhaps it's not the correct word to describe it. Um but no, I think from um what we've kind of when why it's great to have you on on and yeah, to have, have you on the on the podcast and, and have a conversation is because we were really uh we, you know, really kind of loved your article on Moz um and your case study. Um and I think in there, it's, uh, you know, there's some really kind of key information and some great tips for people to actually, you know, use on their own websites and obviously developing top topical authority. Um, I think one of the things that you did um, explain 
uh, quite well. And one of the things that you you did kind of put in there uh, into that case study was that you explained how and you and it was when creating content you were looking at. And it's, I guess this comes into like looking at competitors really and and looking at websites that already have topical authority. So let's say, you know, like yourself is you're starting with, say, a new website or it might not have much kind of authority anyway, in general. Um, so you were describing how you were, you know, doing competitor research in order to kind of learn well, what's out there currently about my subject matter and how can I come at that sub subject with a different and unique perspective. Um, what are your kind of what would be like your a couple of top tips really say you know two or three top tips for 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 you to in giving you know giving someone an idea of how how can they come at you know a subject matter at a different angle to create like new more you know unique content uh, should we first describe the Moss article? What's it about? So people actually. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, ahead. yeah. yeah. So, so please, please Go do use, use that as an opportunity to. Uh, because to at least explain. we know what I'm talking about, but maybe people listen to Yeah, we'll that. also put it in the. Uh, yeah, of course. In the we'll comments, put it in the yeah, description. Please. Yeah. So, really idea. fast, it's a case study about a travel blog I was writing for. for I am writing for four years now. And. I actually didn't have any authority. I didn't build links on it because I hated link building because that's where I started with SEO. Uh, <laughs> you as well. The same. I know. I know how you feel. And the blog started out just with some articles about my past travel because I actually started it in COVID in the first lockdown. I had to trim since 2015. I didn't have time until we were in lockdown. And I was like, I have nothing to do. Let's start a travel blog now. And... <laughs> Um, it never got a lot of traffic until I started doing a keyword research and decided to go a little bit more for the internet topic and started to make it different than everything that was out there. And just because I would have wanted some article that I was writing and not the one I was find, finding out there for my past travels, for my internet travels. And with this first article about interrail traveling Italy, uh, it was my first article in top 10. And after that, it was just crazy. I could post about, uh, about interrail, whatever I want. If the word interrail is in there, I would rank on top 10. And even articles, that was really funny. There was one about meeting people when you travel in Italy. It didn't even mention interrail in the whole article because it was actually for traveling some of the things I did when I traveled Central America and not Interrail. And it ranked for how to meet people traveling with Interrail. I was like, okay, nice. Even an article that's not mentioning the word is ranking. And I didn't realize what's happened, what was happening in the moment until much later when I was like, oh, that's actually topical authority that everyone is talking about. And it changed a lot my approach to keyword research, to SEO and also SEO strategies. That's really interesting, Danny. So how, tell us, how did that actually impact the experience? How did it impact your SEO work? How do you approach like topical authority today? Yeah, it really changed how I do SEO strategies and also keyword research because sometimes the client comes, oh, we have like this five, six topics on our website. Can you do a keyword research for everything? And then I was just like, okay, I will do a keyword research, but you will have time to implement it. And they never have. So it's actually better to say like, let's focus on one topic and make it really good. Make go a little bit deeper, research a little bit deeper. And then we can actually get one topic at a time and get the authority on this. Also to not like spread wide because there were a lot of websites. I tried it with my travel blog as well when the Interrail affiliate was canceled. So I tried to get into other topics, but it never worked that well. So actually I tried to do a little bit of hiking or something. If I would do that and now again, I would start a new blog about hiking. That's really just focused on that topic. Excellent. So, so basically going even further into that kind of those subject matters by even kind of separating them, even like a completely different site that focuses on that um, specific thing. Yeah, in, in this case, with a blog like this, where you can really go deep, if it's not just a small topic, I would really do it that you yeah, get it's quite... the authority with your site. 
it was quite interesting to see that that graph where you were you know showing it obviously like with the the, the Pareto principle isn't it I think you were you mentioned ah mm -hmm. uh, yeah eighty um, twenty. Yeah, which was like, you know, that interrail traffic was creating, you know, a ridiculous amount of traffic for, you know, in comparison to obviously your other posts, yeah. which they had more. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I had about, um, if you go like 100% is all my blog, 20% was just interrail, but it drived 80% of the traffic and 80% mm -hmm. of the posts I wrote. And it's not like, because you could say, yeah, the interrail posts were better, but there were a few that were really good research. This were all like a few that I made three or four. I made about around hiking. They're yeah. Really intense. They're really good research. So it's not just like, okay, the other was low quality content. Yeah. It's really okay. It's yeah, this. So I think one of the things that I, I noticed as well that, that you mentioned was that, um, and going back to that kind of that, that question, I guess, was that you, was saying about um, how if all the competitors were saying that, you know, they were going like uh, Rome or Naples or, you know, just basically there was, you know, and it was all the same. Do you think that, you know, the fact that you create, you, know, you came at it with a unique perspective and you were kind of, you know, say, well, you know, you, you took more of obviously your experience. Do you think that obviously helped you rank way higher? You know, you came along with a fresh voice, and do you think that unique perspective really does help you to to rank much higher in the in the search engine results page? For sure, because it was the first article that actually came into the top ten for me, and it was like the breakthrough. After that, it was a lot easier for everything I was writing, even if it was not a new perspective or something. But mm -hmm. this one article, what I did, what happened? Of course, Interrail is a brand. So if you go on Google, the brand yeah. is ranking and it's ranking with five, six pages. And then you have some other blogs that rank that are specialized on Interrail as well. And what everyone did, I was with the, I was looking for a long tail keyword because it would be easier to enter there with my perspective as one that's really competitive. And there was no one article about how to plan your Interrail route or itinerary in Italy and how mm -hmm. you could actually go around there. It was more like, if you're doing the global interrail, you could visit Rome and Milan before going to Switzerland, something like this. So just in the whole thing and not in the country wise. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, but if I want to go with one country, I might want to explore a little bit more about Italy. And that was the new perspective I put on it with really mm -hmm. itineraries as recommendations. No, brilliant. 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 So one of the things that, that kind of always like fascinates me with, with topical authority is the process of finding your subtopics and your keywords within that topic. Um, and obviously the semantic side of things, you know, semantically um, related subtopics. So how do you approach it now? So what do you do now as a result of that experience when you're doing your keyword research, for example? I'm looking a lot more for keywords that have like search volume 10 or even zero. Because like, I, I mean, there's a difference from German to English, because if I say like a keyword has search volume of 1000, it's really high in German. And so it, I think in English, it's not so high. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so we have 10 is for me still something that I say, okay, I can go for that. Yeah. Um, but especially if you look for, I'm using SEMrush a lot. And if you go to the zero search volumes, these are still searched and there are a lot of questions where you can yeah. really go like, oh, that's something someone is actually looking for. And for sure, nobody's targeting it because it has search volume zero, so nobody's interested in it. And then you can get really like build the topical authority from bottom up. So you yeah. might just get easier into the, especially if you don't have authority like I have. Yeah. So it's, it's basically moving away from just looking at the volume. And yeah. particularly the difficulty. Oh my God. I hate that. Oh, metric. I don't look at I mean, it. It's just do not look at it. Exactly. Um, you know, moving away from that and thinking more holistically yeah. about covering a specific topic. So it's interesting. And I mean, look, we're all for it. It's it's an approach that, that we take a lot in our keyword research as well. Um, tools. 
So what tools do you use? I mean, SEMrush is one of the ones that, that, that you mentioned. Any yeah. other ones for specifically topical authority that you would suggest? For specifically, ChatGPT actually, Gemini. Because oh, wow. Tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> the topic now. Yeah, I, just, yeah. I just made some tests today with um, comparing the result of ChatGPT and Gemini, the new version they have. And actually, yeah. Gemini is better I think, for now. Oh, for controversial. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what I do, because I, st I just started a new website program where I want to try it out as, as well. And what I did for this one, I'm trying to build a website using artificial intelligence wherever it can help me, which doesn't mean I let him write all the texts. Yeah. Because that's yeah. not what Let's make it for. clear. Otherwise, yeah. you'll be on the chopping board with with block with all of the rest of them. Yeah, exactly. No, it's more like I started with uh, finding a brand name, finding mm. some brand colors, defining my brand. Because I think if you want to build, like it's it will be an affiliate project. But if you want to build an affiliate project in 2025, you for you need to build a brand because yeah. that's what's working: a brand and not just some random guy who makes recommendations or girl in this yeah. case but so i started with the brand building and then i started building out the persona and that's mm. working really well to get a little bit an idea about who's searching and then ask like what would be the questions what topics might they have and so you get a really great insight about what you will need to build it's not it's not good for keyword research because it's in it's inventing keywords all the time and you think like where did you get that word but to get an insight about the topics you might need to write that are even especially long tail or something, you really get a little bit, okay, that's all I should cope. And then I go to do a keyword research on SEMrush or I also use Keyword Planner. Now I started mm -hmm. because I actually really like how he, how Google is in Keyword Planner. If I get it, uh, put in a keyword, SEMrush will just get your keywords that have that one in there or some slight variations. Yeah. But the keyword planner even gets you synonyms sometimes. Yeah. Mm. So it's actually Which really like good. interesting what you get there. Yeah, no, it's 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 good stuff. We went to um Search London recently and one of the presenters was talking all about kind of um topics and, and uh kind of topical authority and, and um I don't know what the tool is. I have to look it up, but it looks at um, semantically related topics um, to kind of build the pillars to mm -hmm. build the, which is super, super, this is, this is the super important bit. It's not just about, okay, I'm going to like talk about cheese and I'm just going to cover everything like related to cheese. If you look at, kind of how semantics work and entities as well around cheese in this case, um, then it, it becomes a strategy. It becomes an SEO strategy rather than yeah. just, you know, let's let's write about this or that. I'll send you I'll send you the link. Yeah, I haven't tried the tool, but it's it's really it's really big on because it's with the tools that you mentioned, uh they're brilliant. Uh, but I find that there is still not that clear link to no. semantics this you know like the, the 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 how do you say it? it's kind of a closeness of the words yeah yeah it's There's like the distance the distance between the terms yeah. basically that you're looking at to kind of determine what are the best ones that you should be yeah. talking about it's it's Sorry. I think I'm always with my my approach. There's a lot of manual work in there because normally yeah. when I do keyword research it's 10 hours collecting mm -hmm. and then 10 to 15 hours ordering, clustering, putting it into format, researching on Google. And that's like, yeah. there's a lot of like manual work in there to go through every keyword to look like, how do I cluster them? How it's better? Or even look to competitors. Is there, are there yeah. more topics that would be necessary yeah. and everything? So there's a lot of manual yeah. work still in there. Yeah. Same with us. Okay. One topic that we didn't cover and I'm mindful of time, but like when somebody says topical authority, I immediately think of that is, and you mentioned it in your Moore's blog is EAT. Yeah. Tell <laughs> us what you think about it and how does it connect and does it connect? 
I think actually topical authority is an important part of it because it's the authority part that I also feel like Google is going more and more in this direction with the updates they are doing and everything that it's not just looking at one page of your website. It looks at the whole page. It looks at who is the author. And one thing to get authority in a topic is if you write a lot about it, that doesn't mean just on your site. Like the Moss article I wrote showed, I know something about SEO, even if it was on another site and will help me also that Google knows like, oh, this girl actually is doing something with SEO. So maybe we should listen a little. Maybe you'll get a knowledge panel. <laughs> oh, that's, that, that's, I'm, that's, that's, I'm that's, waiting that's, for the knowledge that, panel. That's, 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 you know, like so ooh, the golden get, get ticket for every, yeah, every, the golden ticket for every a, SEO. Yeah. If you get a knowledge panel, you know, you made it. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that the, that's the essence a little bit of the eat. It's not building an awful page and building, getting an icon and your face out there and having an awful part. That's something you can do, but it's not the essential part of it. I think the essential part is that you show you have knowledge at this topic that you're writing about and show Google, hey, you can actually rank me there. You can trust me. And I think yeah. that's the most important part about it. Not the get a photo of the author, get the author name, get a link to his websites. That's just like something surrounding everything to connect it. But Google can recognize if you wrote it or a uh, GPT wrote it or another person and you're just putting your name down there. Hmm. So he can recognize the structures and everything. So I think that's really the thing to stick to one topic and putting a lot or a lot putting your knowledge out there and showing Google and the user, oh yeah, I can trust it. Yeah. Um, just one final question from me, uh, Danny, before we go on to uh, room 404. Um, one of the things I guess in the Moz article that, that we've explained is that, you know, you, you kind of came to that and, and you had a successful article and that obviously changed, but what would you say to people that don't have that success initially with articles that they're trying? Because, you know, at the end, you're quite positive with the article and you sign off. But what would you be your advice to people that, you know, um, yeah, maybe they're not successful straight away with, say, like an idea or, or a, you know, an idea for an article or something that, that say, just doesn't rank very well? Um. Yeah, one thing with this article, of course, if I go before I wrote it, it was like a chance I took to write it and see how it's going. I put all the effort in there I can put in there because it took me three months to write it and to research oh. everything. So I really put a lot of effort in there. Um, what I would go after is for sure long tail keywords. It's always already said, like it's easier to get in. It's you can really be concrete about the topic and what you're writing about. And going, um, it should be a long and good researched article as well, not just like 500, 600 words. Like a lot of people think like that's enough if you want to go in there. And if, if you like on my travel blog, I had a few topics I could cover. It was the interrail. It was the, I also saw, I already saw a little bit that it's working better than others. I had the solo traveling I was thinking about, the group travel, the world travel. And I tried a little bit of everything until one topic just to stand it out. Mm -hmm. But if you have your page or your business, which is really one topic, don't give up on the first few articles. Just write yeah. more and write more. And then you see, then you will get into it because it's not like, I think it was because it was so a special article and so different from the rest, like you said, that I got in there with one. But if it wouldn't have been that one, I would have needed like right 10, 15 around interrail until yeah. Google might start trusting. So that's normally the normal way, I yeah, think. Yeah. <laughs> Good. No, I, well, I like the message. That's a great message to end on is, you know, to, for people is that they yeah, just don't give up basically is that, yeah, to yeah. You know, mm -hmm. keep on and carry on and, and keep, keep working at it. And then, you know, you will have a successful um, article at some point, you know, um, right on to room 404. Um, I mean, Amina and I have plenty of things each week it's, that we would like to it's banish. Stuffed. It's stuffed. The room um, four <laughs> is bursting at the seams. Yeah, I think we're <laughs> going to have to migrate it over to a larger, uh, a larger place, aren't we? Um, so, Danny, we will invite you to suggest something that has annoyed you or 
Um, yeah, something that maybe this week, maybe this month. Um, is there anything that you would like to banish to room 404 forever, never to see the light of day again? Does it need to be something with SEO? D no. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to okay. be. <laughs> then I want to punish Windows and every Win Windows update out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll explain okay. it. Last week on Thursday, I went to Austria because I'm living in Switzerland and we went with the car there and half an hour before we leave, left with the car, I was shutting down my computer and it had to do some updates. And I was like, yeah, just do your updates and afterwards I can shut you down to put you into the car. It was never starting again. It was just like in a loop. And I have a technical education. I have set up Windows, so I was all weekend trying to restore it. I restored it on Saturday morning just to install the update again and getting again in the loop. Then I decided I need a new laptop. I just popped a new laptop and I really would have loved a Google Chrome laptop because I'm so pissed of Windows. But the Google Chrome laptops are not really that easy to get at the moment. I don't know what mm -hmm. happened to the Google Chrome because... What about Macs? I mean, I'm surprised no, that you're like... like oh, that's... Good. No. We'll have another episode <laughs> for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming from IT. I'm not using Apple. Uh... <laughs> But I would love a Chrome laptop because I actually do everything in the cloud. And now I just, today I got my Windows laptop, my new one. I'm actually recording this one on my old laptop because yesterday evening I recovered it finally. I blocked oh. every update now for the next okay. week so that I at least have for one week this laptop more again. And I got it today and I'm, I think I've already done two hours deinstalling Microsoft apps and trying to install my <laughs> Google apps. <laughs> So uh, I'm really pissed at Windows. Uh, this, it's, yeah, it's a great case. We, we'll happily lock that away for you. No problem at all. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Th anything else from yourself, Amina? No, I think I think it's a it's a a controversial one. A whole operating <laughs> system in there. Just, just yeah, we can put it. We can put it. We can put it in there. Yeah, but, but I think uh, if you, yeah, it's a good one. But the same thing, if if you were if you were using uh, Max, and I think that you know that would have been in Rufora for a long time ago. Um, so yeah, but no, thank you so much for your time today, uh, Danny. It's been uh, yeah, it's been really great to to have you here, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for being a guest. Um, yeah, I, I, that's it. I guess it's time to to wrap up, really. And I think I've already finished my coffee. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Um, final words from me, uh, from S anybody at SEO is getting coffee. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do uh, engage in the conversation. Feel free to ask any questions. Please do leave some comments um, and we'd love to start the discussion online. Um, but yeah, thanks again. And hopefully we'll see you next week where we, I think we have another guest lined up, don't we, Amina? Mm, I think so. I got, we I might got to do. check. We might do. Okay. Brilliant. Uh, and <laughs> Thank don't you so forget, much. Don't forget to check out Danny online and check out yep. her website and we'll put it in the comments. She's been yep. an amazing guest. She's a great SEOer as well. So, yep. you know, Let Google hear that. we will put everything yeah, yeah. in the description <laughs> and she's we will, the, uh, we'll the also authority, authority on topical authority. There you go. And Amina, if you go. can, so if cheesy. you can remember those tools that you were talking about as well, we'll put those in the description as well. Yeah. So people, fantastic. Sounds good. Brilliant. Thanks very much everyone. And uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.